What's going on, Los Angeles? How you doing? I bring you greetings from one of the great cities of the world, New York City, home of the New York Mets. But uh, I'll tell you what, Pastor Matthew, I am cheering for the Dodgers and, and you guys to, to bring it home. A couple of hate, couple haters, couple haters. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll pray, we'll pray, we'll get this thing going. Uh, I want to bring you greetings from our church, Belrose Assembly of God in Queens, and uh, I want you to know students and everyone who's here at the Dream Center, we love you, we are behind you, we are believing God for great things in your life, not only now in this moment, but the best is yet to come. How many people believe that the best is yet to come? Amen. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Pastor Matthew and Pastor Caroline. You have no idea how much you both have blessed me. Uh, you know, wh what's happening in New York City is a direct result of your influence in, in my life and in the church. And I want you to know, being here three times, it's, it's a blessing uh, to be here with my son who's in the front row. Uh, yeah, they call him, they call him... Uh, Little Dom, but Little Dom got more hair and more height than his old man, so God bless him. Praise the Lord. Amen. But uh, to Pastor Matthew and Caroline, thank you so much for having me, and uh, you guys are awesome. We love you, and uh, we stand behind you. We're with you till the end. Amen. So you got, you got great leaders here. Amen. Let's hear it for the leadership here at the Angelus Temple. All right. Are you ready to get to work? If you have your Bibles, open up with me to Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And I, I want to speak a message to you entitled, Walking in Your Season. Walking in Your Season. You know, it's funny, uh, in the church world, we got a lot of catchphrases. It's a new season. And when we say it's a new season, we kind of get excited. But how many people know that seasons come in all different shapes and sizes and your season may not be a happy season. It may be a season of turmoil. It may be a season of wondering why this is happening. And we find Joshua in this, in this passage of scripture in a transition where he's moved from being Moses' aide to now being the leader of Israel. To fulfill a 430-year-old promise. How many people know God will keep his promises? Some of you are here right now. You need to understand, God's going to keep his promises to you. The promises of God are yes and amen. Come on. Can somebody say amen to that over your life? And uh, God's coming through. But Joshua, as we can see by the content of what God speaks to him, is freaking out in this transition. How many people know you could believe God for the title, you could want the title, then you get the title? And how many people know with the title comes the responsibility? Everybody wants to be a CEO, but nobody wants CEO problems. Everybody wants to be a lead pastor, but nobody wants to lead pastor problems. Why do you think I'm bald? <laughs> Half is youth ministry, the other three quarters is senior pastor. I don't even know. And look at how messed up I am. I can't even add. Half and three quarters make a whole. You know, the New York school system, anyway, what I'm talking about, All right? Yeah. Common core. All right, let's get to work. You ready? We find Joshua in a transition where he's moving from one season to another. And by the content of what God is speaking to him, we can see that he's, he's, he's stressing out a little bit. And let's read it together. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites, and I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, and the Hittite country, the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Someone needs to hear that right now. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. 
I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I'm going to tell you something. In those moments of life when you don't know where the answer is going to come from. In those moments of life when you don't know where the help is going to come from. I'm going to tell you something. Be strong and courageous. Because if you're connected to Jesus, Jesus is connected to you. And no one and no thing can stand against you when you walk with God. You ready to pray? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the mind and the heart of Christ. I pray that you would speak this word not only to the people who are in this room, but those that are watching online. And I thank you by the time we're done that we will understand, Lord, that even though we walk through seasons, you are with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. I thank you we will leave out of this room today with such an assurance to know that we will not only walk in, but we will walk through and make it to the next level. There is victory in this place, and we ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes 3 talks about there's a time and a season for everything. And that's a great scripture, and we read it, but once again, just like the song, it's a new season. Oh, I got, I, got, I got some West Coast honey in my voice here today. It becomes cliche. This is my season, and we get excited when we hear this is my season. And then when we read Ecclesiastes, there's a time to be born, a time to die. But I want you to understand something. Seasons happen to all of us. It's guaranteed that every one of us will go through seasons. And and the interesting thing is when you're done with one season, you're going to get to the next season. And I want you to understand something. Let's just get this out of the way. As long as you got a heart beating, as long as you got a call on your life, as long as you got a purpose inside of you, you will always be transitioning from one glory to the next glory. You're not done until your heart stops. And seasons happen to all of us. Now, seasons happen because... Maybe on our own initiative where you, you, you know, you, you have a goal. I'm going to go to college. You have a goal. I'm going to get married. You have a goal. I'm going to have a child. And seasons sometimes happen by our own, our own initiative, but then they happen to us where we don't necessarily plan for it. Have you ever walked through a season where you went to bed one night with happiness and then you woke up in the morning and your whole world was rocked? You know, where you, where you went to bed with, with, with a relative and then you got a call in the middle of the night. We hate to tell you the bad news. Nobody ever plans for these things to happen, but as long as you're going to be living, you're going to realize you're going to go through seasons. You're going to go through seasons where you're going to feel like the only person in the world going through what you're going through. The devil's a liar. Let me tell you something. The devil is a liar. And if you're feeling lonely right now, don't forfeit your future based on what you feel right now. Because just as much as God is real and just as much as God is alive, he who began a good work in you will carry through to completion. Come on, somebody say amen. And right now you're in a season. Listen, I'm 42 years old. I know some of you thought I looked older. Time has not been good to him. Now, I may know what it's like to be in October, in most of the Octobers of my life, but let me tell you something. I've never been 42 in an October, and you're in a season right now you have never been in before. It may look familiar, it may be similar, but it's a place you've never been before. And however you got in this season, I want you to understand, you can write this down, the key to thriving in that season is perspective. How many times has your perspective been off and then you've created a problem? You've worried, you didn't sleep, you didn't eat, and all of a sudden you got all frustrated because what you see was not the reality. I love what the prophet Stephen Furtick says. It is what it is, but it's not what it seems. Perspective. Perspective says no matter what season I am in, as long as I am connected to Jesus, I'm going to make it through. To those of you students that are up in the balcony, I want you to understand, as long as you are connected to Jesus, it doesn't matter if you're here, it doesn't matter if you're the other side of the world. As long as you're connected to Jesus, you're going to make it through. Now, I want to break it down and give you some illustrations. 
I want to give you the illustration that your season is the vehicle that God uses to prepare you, which propels you to the next level of your destiny. And you can either look at it as a curse or you can look at it as a tool that God is using to shape you with. So let me present to you Joseph. Everybody say with me Joseph. Joseph was betrayed by his brother, by his brothers, and he was thrown into a cistern. He was sold into slavery. He wound up in Potiphar's house where he was accused of a crime that he didn't commit. Then he was thrown into prison where he's forgotten about. And then he, he translates the dream of the cupbearer and the baker, and he's, and he's left there. Have you ever felt like, like the revelation that God gave you doesn't match the reality of what you're looking at right now? And so many of you know exactly what that feels like when the revelation of the dream that God gives you, like he gave Joseph, doesn't match the reality of what you see right now. Like you see, you see the call of God on your life. You see, you see the movement of God in your life. You see a husband. You see a wife. You see kids. You see increase. You see ministry. And that's what God reveals to you in prayer. But then there comes the process. And it's like I spoke here last year. The process is part of the plan. But at the right time, God elevated Joseph to the second in command of Egypt. And everything that he had to go through was repositioning him to be in the right place at the right time. If he was back with his father, he would have been suffocated to death. If he never got out of the comforts of daddy's home and been thrown into the cistern, he would have never been put in a position to move a whole nation from a small tribe to be a mighty nation that was about to, pro to possess the land. And I'm speaking to somebody right now that, you, that you're in heaven's waiting room and you don't see the answer. But I'm telling you, though the vision tarry, it will certainly come to pass. There's a reason why you're going through it. Not everything is peaches and candies and sprinkles and ice cream. Or if you're Italian, pasta. And if you're Jamaican, curry goat man. Oh, yeah, I'm half Jamaican, half Italian. They call me Jitalian, baby. But let me talk to you about Moses. You see, you could choose to look at your season, even a season of challenges, even a season where it doesn't seem like everything is working out. But I'm here to tell you, if you're connected to Jesus, you're going to make it through. The Lord is my shepherd. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he is with me. When you are connected to Jesus, you're going to make it through. It's when you're disconnected to him and his word that you become vulnerable. So Moses finds himself. Now, how many parents do we have in the place? Parents. Praise God for parents. Amen. Could you imagine as a mother you're pregnant and then you give birth to the baby and you got to send that baby down the river? Some of you are like, absolutely not. But believe me, for parents with more than one kid, it's a viable option. Just saying, we're in church, I won't be struck by lightning. Don't worry, Dom, it wasn't you. It was your brother. No, Luke, it's not you, it's your sister. Definitely it's your sister. Yeah, come on now. But here's the deal. What looked like an unfortunate event of a baby being separated from his mother was a necessity. Because it repositioned him. How many people know when God's in it, God is in it? And some of you are here like, I doubt God. I don't understand his existence. I feel like he's left me high and dry. I'm telling you, just because you don't hear God doesn't mean God don't hear you. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And sometimes God will distance his voice to you in the midst of a season so he can train your ear to stop listening to your emotions and listening to his word. If you're going to be something great, you've got to be prepared in the crucible of his presence where God allows you to depend on his word because heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. And sometimes he needs to bring you through a season where you don't feel him and you don't hear him. But that doesn't mean he's not there because at the right time God shows up. He's not, he's not hurting you. He's not allowing the world to get one up on you. He's repositioning you. And when Moses wound up in Pharaoh's household, how good is God? Moses was, and here's what you need to understand. 
when God puts you in a season, you have the opportunity to either learn from it or reject it. And if you keep rejecting it, you're going to be in that season over and over and over again. Because God loves you too much to allow you to forfeit the lesson because the lesson is the most important thing for you to learn so that you're ready to hold the blessing. And Moses, when he was in Pharaoh's house, it's all about intelligence. When, when you are going through a season... You need to understand, you've got to keep your eyes open. You need to take notes. You need to look at how people do things. And how many people know, when you're in a season and you're learning from somebody, you can learn two things. You can learn what to do and what not to do. And when Moses was in Pharaoh's house, he was learning diplomacy. He had to be repositioned outside of his mother's house, in the Pharaoh's house, because he had to learn diplomacy, because eventually he would circle back around and he would need to take the lesson he learned in Pharaoh's house and be able to have the connection. Nobody gets to walk into the White House unless you got a connection. Nobody gets to walk into the palaces of this world unless you have a connection. And Moses needed that connection because it was key to the process of his people moving from one level to the next. And the very place that you're in, you may not like you may say God why'd you allow to do that why'd you allow this to happen to me but I want to remind you look at where you are start taking notes and gather intelligence don't waste an opportunity because if you waste the opportunity God will have to circle back around and around and around again because some of you are so frustrated because you've been up to season after season you sound like a country music record I lost my dog I lost my house I lost my cat I lost my cowboy hat have you ever met somebody that's going through the same thing? They've lost seven jobs. At some time, it's not about the job. It's about you, boo. And if Moses threw away the opportunity to gather the intelligence, when he circled back around to talk to Pharaoh, he would have been like this. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't you understand? It's not a setback. It's a setup. So Moses finally, he's, he's living the life. He's in Pharaoh's house. He's eating the food. He's, he's got the room. He's got the pedigree. He's Pharaoh's boy. How many people ever got the hookup? In New York City, it's all about who you know. <laughs> hey, I know a guy about a thing. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Uh, you know, my name is Dominic Cotignola. I may or may not be, but you don't want to find out. You know what I'm saying? Those people who talk like that, always looking over their back. Moses had the connections, but one day. How many people know one day? Seasons change just like that one day. Everybody say it with me. One day. One day he's out and he sees an Egyptian beating down an Israelite. And he runs to his aid and he kills the Egyptian. He has to flee to Midian, a city of refuge. And all of a sudden for 40 years he has to, he has to work with his father-in-law and shepherd his sheep. Now, once again, Midian is a place of obscurity. Midian is a place where nobody knows your name. Midian is where you had it all, and all of a sudden you're looking at what you had, and you're saying, God, my revelation doesn't match my reality. Have you ever been in Midian? Have you ever been in Midian where you're just saying, God, I feel like my life is on pause, and I, I guess I'm just going to have to get back to the fact that it's just always going to have to be this way. But remember, every season you go through is about gathering intelligence. And it was in Pharaoh's house that Moses learned diplomacy. But it was in Midian for 40 years. How many people know there's nothing? There's, God is so good. Come on, how many people know? God's got it. God's got it. Stop trying to sanitize your life. God has got it. Stop trying to figure it out. He was in Midian for 40 years. What were they about to do in the wilderness? They were about to journey in the wilderness for 40 years, and it was in Midian that he learned how to be a shepherd and lead, and he learned how to survive in a desert. If he woke up every, every morning and he says, forget this, I got my father's sheep, my father-in-law's sheep, I got, oh my Lord, I got to do this, I got to do this, and he just, and he didn't take advantage of the situation because there's a lot of people in their seasons, they do more complaining than they do praying.
but he was there. And at the right time, God showed up in the burning bush. And he said, Moses, take off your sandals because the place where you are standing is holy ground. I'm telling you, if you learn the lesson, if you gain the intelligence, God is going to show up at the right time. And when God is going to show up, he's going to lift you up. Because if you can humble yourself before the Lord, the Bible says he will lift you up. Going through seasons is all about intelligence. Are you willing to take a step back and say, okay, God, I don't like this, but I trust you that you know what you're doing. And then we see Joshua. Joshua was outside the tent of meeting while Moses went in. Now, how many of you have ever had a job you didn't like? Those of you that work at the Dream Center, you're talking about another job, right? (laughs) All right, because you're on film now, you know what I'm saying. We got cameras everywhere. Don't worry, the Belrose people are raising their hands at home right now. The past is away. Yeah, we hate this job. It's horrible. How many of you have ever had a job that you just felt like you weren't being used to your potential? I want to tell you something. Do not despise the days of small beginnings. Be faithful with what God has put in front of you and work it. Work it. Work it like a Polaroid picture. Work it. Listen, you know the parable of the talents? Everybody know the parable of the talents? There's a master. He went away on a journey, and he left his, his, his resources. He left his whole fortune to three stewards, right? To one, he left one talent. To one, he left two talents. To one, he left five talents. And the Bible said this, he left them each according to his own ability. Stop being jealous about what everybody else has because comparison is the thief of joy. Understand what you have in front of you is based on your capacity. And every one of those stewards were given based on their capacity. Now, there was a time when I first got out of Bible college and and I was the youth pastor and I was the guy that had to do all the airport pickups and I was the guy that had pretty much youth pastor means you you, you shepherd the youth and you do everything the senior pastor doesn't want to do. Pick up the guest speaker's laundry. And the list goes on and on. But if you don't honor what God exposes you to, you'll never get elevation to the places God has chosen you to be. You may have one, and if you got one, if you're the the, the head of the mailroom, you make it the best mailroom on the face of God's green earth. You color coordinate every piece of mail. You get a you you sniff it personally for anthrax. Do whatever you gotta do to be you, boo. And you work that mail room like nobody else. And then all of a sudden, you don't think anybody sees. Have you ever been in a job? Oh, they don't see what I do. They don't see what I do. Nobody knows. Uh, everything you do, do it for the glory of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're frustrated in your season right now and you say nobody sees, God sees. And at the right time, he's going to show up. So the one he gave one, the one he gave two, the one he gave five, each according to their own ability, capacity. Say it with me, capacity. And the Bible says this, the one that had two multiplied it to four. The one that had five multiplied it to ten. The master comes back and he's going to settle the accounts. And to those who multiplied, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with the small things. Now I'm going to make you ruler over much. How many people know God wants to bless you more than just monetarily? Why have we gotten in the church like all of a sudden, yeah, he's going to bless my money. Why is he going to bless your money but not bless you to take care of that money? Why is he going to bless your money but not give you the aptitude and the skill set and the maturity that you need to multiply that money? Because last I checked, we are blessed to be a blessing. It costs too much to look rich. All the celebrities in Hollywood, they get paid to wear what they get to wear. They get Gucci for free. And I know some of you, you've been in Canal Street in New York City where we got Scoochie. It ain't Gucci, but it's Scoochie. <laughs> It'll last you two times. But I'm going to tell you something. It was the ones that were faithful 
It was the ones that were faithful with the small things that the master blessed every part of their life. He, he just didn't say, here's a raise. He says, I'm going to give you responsibility over much more. And when you gather intelligence in your season, it may be a season of obscurity. It may be a season that nobody knows about. It may even be a season of heartbreak and pain. But if you could be faithful in that season, you better believe God's going to get you out of that season. Because there was one outside the tent of meeting, Joshua, the aide of Moses, that when Moses was was in the tent. Oh yeah, he was outside the tent. But the Bible says even when Moses left the tent, Joshua was still there. Do you know what that says to me? That's somebody who worked it. That's somebody who honored it. He didn't look down on the fact that he was second. And it was because of his faithfulness and his obedience that God put the mantle of leadership on him and he entrusted him with more. You may think that nobody's watching. God is watching you in your season. The Lord is watching you in your season. And what you do for the Lord is not in vain. And I'm speaking to somebody right now. Your promotion is near. Just be faithful. Seasons are necessary because life needs them. Come on. Life would be boring if we didn't have seasons. We would have repetition and routine and boredom, <laughs> and we would get too comfortable. And I want to share this with you. There is no growth in the comfort zone. You know, a lot of, lot of people in the church want to come to church, and it's all about feed me, feed me, feed me. But how many people know you, you can't have a buffet body when God has called you to have a lean, mean, Holy Ghost-filled bicep machine? You can't consume so much, and then all of a sudden, it's when it's all about you, when, it's all, when, the, when the songs are all about you, when the, when the preaching is all about you, and then we get comfortable. But, but you need to understand something. When God pushes you out of your comfort zone, it's not to destroy you. It's to prepare you. And it's God's desire for you not to remain stagnant, but to grow, achieve, thrive, possess, and fulfill the destiny that he has called you to have. Walk in your season. In Joshua 1, 1 through 2, it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. And I'm going to tell you something. One of the biggest things you need to understand is that in order for you to move from one season to the next, sometimes things need to die. Maybe what's holding you back is what you haven't yet released to God. And sometimes you get thrown into a season. <laughs> and, and, and how about this? What got you into that season was great. I mean, in our church, we, 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 when, we, when we came to the Pastors and Leaders School in 2005, I inherited a, a church that was in the middle of a church split. Pastor, we were one snowstorm away. I know, snowstorm in L.A., you guys don't understand this. But in New York, <laughs> just the threat of snow, like we're going to have one centimeter of snow, people lose their minds. We were one snowstorm away from not being able to make the payroll. We mustered up enough money to come to the Pastors and Leaders School. And I saw the Dream Center for the first time. And we were late because we missed the church. And we were up in the third balcony at Phoenix. And you guys came out and did a dance number called Let's Get It Started. And there I was with my deacons. And I'm thinking we had some hyper-religious ones at the time. And I'm thinking that's it. They're just doing a dance to Let's Get It Started. I'm fired. That's it. I had the shortest run as a, as a senior pastor in the history of the earth. And something happened there. God lit a fire in the team, and on the side of the mountain we prayed because we were inspired by what God is doing here in Los Angeles, what God was doing in Phoenix. And so the church has grown. I'm, I'm happy to say we don't have to worry that much about snow anymore. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you something. We're at a level now where I realize that everything that we've done to get to this point is not what God wants us to use to get to the next level. The Bible says this, and this is what you need to understand about your life. Nobody puts new wine into old wineskins. 
See, here's the deal. When they're making the wine, and, and listen, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't promoting drinking. Don't do it, okay? Just don't do it. Don't do it. But what I'm saying is back in the Bible times, they had the grape juice. And the grape juice would be put into this receptacle. It would be a wine skin, okay? And so what happened was is that the wine skin was like an animal skin. And the old wine skin, what happened is when you put the new wine in, the molecules and all the things and all the science that happens for the grape juice to ferment, it would expand the wine skin, all right? And so what happens is if you put new wine into an already expanded wine skin, the Bible says is that the very blessing that God wants to pour into your receptacle will break and it will fall all on the floor. It will be wasted. And some of you at this level have been stretched to the capacity of where God can take you at this level. But you've got to put on a new wineskin now. You've got to be stretched to another greater capacity it means you have to say goodbye to things that you got that may have gotten you to this point. You may need to say goodbye to people. You may need to break up with that boy. You may, you may need to say to Shaniqua, hey, listen, listen, it's not you, it's me. I'm going to say something to you. In your seasons... There are people that are here to get you from one level to another, but, but, but they may not be the people who you need in your inner circle for the next level. If Moses stuck around in Joshua's life, Joshua would have had a safety net. But God understood that if Joshua was going to fiercely lead the people to a promised land that they never held in their life, that, that, that Joshua couldn't be dependent on God and Moses, Joshua can only be dependent on God. And I'm telling you something, when God puts you in a season where he removes your safety net and removes the people who helped you get to this level, you could sit there and you could cry. Listen, cry for a day, eat at the side of the river, but, but, but I'm going to tell you something, when that river dries up, God's moving you to another the source, Elijah. You've got to walk through your season, and you cannot get caught up in the peripherals. Son, do you have that bottle? The uh, Purell bottle I gave you before? I got props. I came with props. Come on. I got this. I went to CVS. I spared no expense for these props. I got a bottle of CVS hand sanitizer. Why? Because Purell is too expensive. I want to share this with you. Stop trying to sanitize your life and control your outcomes. There will be trouble, but take heart, you overcome it. John 16, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And you see what happens is somebody told me this who's in the medical field. He says, we use Purell for everything, right? How many of you use Purell on a regular basis, right? You know, and, and what happens is this, is if you use this all the time, you're actually going to kill your body's resistance to some germs. It's like if you took antibiotics for every little sniffle you had, you'd eventually become immune to the antibiotics, and a super, antibi a super body would eventually take over your body. And, and what happens is this. When, when it comes to our seasons, we want to sanitize ourselves. We want to say, God, I want the call. I want the dream. I want the husband. But I'm not willing to do the work. I want it all to go great. Let me tell you a story. We wanted a kid. Four years married, we finally said, okay, it's time to have a child. So we, we were pregnant. Not, not, so I'm st I still am. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we were pregnant, and, and we were pregnant with Dominic. My wife was pregnant with Dominic. I'm a pastor. I'm serving the Lord. And we went for the ultrasound after three months. And the doctor said in the middle of the ultrasound, he, uh, he said, hey, um, we think he may have Down syndrome and water on his brain. And when they said that, I almost, fa I almost fainted. And they said, well, congratulations, you're having a boy, but maybe you might want to abort the baby. And I looked at God and I said, how could you do this to me? I'm a pastor. I serve you. How could you do this to me? This is our first child. And for six months, 
we had to walk through the uncertainty. We went for an amniocentesis, and they told us, okay, he doesn't have Down syndrome, but there's still a chance he may because of the water on the brain and the water in the kidneys. We had to walk through six months of the pregnancy not knowing what on earth this kid was going to become. And, you know, the doctors have to tell you the worst-case scenario. And, and we walked through a season that I don't ever want to walk through again. And then on that one night, September 25th, 2002, in an emergency C-section, they took this baby and they put him over the curtain. And the tune that was playing, oddly enough, was gangster loving. I don't know, the anesthesiologist was really, you know, loving the... <laughs> <laughs> and it's followed suit. If you really knew him, he's, you know, he's OG. All right, there we go. But I want to tell you something. We had to walk through that season only to see that after six months and three months of testing, when we finally got all the test results back, there was no water on his brain. <laughs> there was no water on his kidneys. <laughs> he did not have Down syndrome. He has a full head of hair, and I pray he keeps it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> did I want to walk through that season? No. Did I want to walk through a season that after the second pregnancy, my wife and I would go through a miscarriage? No. Did I want to walk through a season where when I was elected to be the senior pastor, I only got in by two votes, and the two votes were my wife and I? <laughs> Did I want to walk through a season where the first year I became the pastor, I single-handedly helped populate more churches in New York City than any church growth program in the world? Did I want to walk through seasons where I got pictures with my head cut out? thrown under the door when we started doing community outreach? Did I want to walk through seasons where, where in between pastors I served as a youth pastor and associate pastor? Did I want to walk through seasons where, 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 where it seemed like my job was in jeopardy, my calling was in jeopardy, but I'm here to tell you that I'm not just preaching to you facts or things that I think may help you. I'm preaching about what I've walked through in my own life. I'm a living testimony that if you could just stick through the seasons, even though they don't make sense, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he is with me he was faithful to Joshua he was faithful to me he was faithful to your pastor and he will be faithful to you walk in your season pastor Matthew would you come